During the holidays, many people expect a level of contrived civility from others. At family gatherings, warnings are exchanged about which subjects to avoid in order to prevent arguments. Feel-good stories about benevolent acts are reported. We receive reports on the location of Santa's sleigh and tidbits of information about cultural differences and how the holidays are celebrated. This is supposed to be the season of good feelings, and most people make concessions to maintain this positive atmosphere. Not CNN, it seems. They spent Christmas reporting again just how bad Trump is. Well then, it's time for some roasted opinions. CNN's battles with Donald Trump have become historically significant at this point. President Trump doesn't have much use for candy coating things, and his battles for control of press briefings with Jim Acosta would make a great case study in journalistic ethics. CNN faced a choice in response to his hostility. Back off and let the situation calm down or push harder to prove a point. I think that we all know by now that CNN chose to push as hard as possible. Every story, no matter the subject, became another round of Orange Man Bad. Let me remind you of some examples from the past. Intel chiefs present Trump with claims of Russian efforts to compromise him. Trump responded with this famous exchange. Good question, sir. Go ahead. Sir, can quiet, you state, can, quiet. Mr. President-elect, go ahead. Can you say categorically, Mr. President-elect, can you give us a question? Don't be You're rude. Attacking us. Can you give us a question? Don't be rude. Can you no, give us a question? I'm you, not going to give you a can question. You can you stay categorical? You are fake news. Sir, go ahead. This provoked Jim Acosta, who leads the charge against Trump at CNN. This was an interesting choice for Jim, since as the assigned White House correspondent from CNN, Acosta needs access to the president and his staff to do his job. Trump supporter Scotty Nell Hughes parts ways with CNN. Hmm. I wonder why. CNN reports that Trump aide Monica Crowley plagiarized thousands of words in her dissertation. Because of this report and follow-ups, Crowley walked away from the senior communications job offered her. She now works as a consultant for a lobbying firm. CNN reports that Trump may end access to birth control for many Americans. Really? How? I read this article, and it's all speculation. A CNN opinion piece accuses Trump of gaslighting the nation the same day that Trump's Twitter account reaches 20 million followers. It seems that presidents aren't supposed to speak directly to the American people, according to CNN. CNN's Mark Lamont Hill opines that African Americans who meet with Trump are mediocre Negroes. That is a disgusting statement, Mr. Hill. Meeting with someone who is perceived to be a racist is mediocre, huh? Is this an accurate characterization of Dr. King, who met with President Johnson, cited as one of the most racist presidents in American history? CNN reports that Tiffany & Company lost business due to its proximity to Trump Tower. What? Is this newsworthy? Certainly it affects Tiffany & Company, but they are an institution in American jewelry sales. They certainly survived the situation. CNN's Jake Tapper warns other journalists that if they don't stand up to Trump, you're next. Nope, no dire threat unsupported by facts there. CNN reports that Trump has rattled NATO with his obsolete blast. You know, NATO wouldn't be considered obsolete by President Trump if most of the member nations met their treaty obligations regarding military spending. 2% guys. This is just the highlights between January 10th and January 17th, 2017. Trump wasn't inaugurated until the 20th. By the time Donald Trump became President Trump, he was in a full-blown media war with CNN. Do I consider the president innocent in this matter? Um, no. Just, no. Trump is an extremely blunt man and he always hits back when someone hits him. That's why a meme was quickly published showing him smacking the crap out of CNN using an old clip from WrestleMania 23. His barbed tweets have given as good as CNN's reporting has given. There really have been no attempts to set aside the media war on either side, culminating in the temporary revocation of Jim Acosta's White House credentials. 
Jim Acosta filed suit in November to have them reinstated and won. But this latest mess... Hmm... Here's a quick timeline. CNN reports that Trump asked a seven-year-old if he still believes in Santa Claus. CNN reports on Trump's statements about drugs crossing the border using the headline, Trump's message on Christmas Day is a disgrace. CNN reports that Trump is frustrated with Treasury Secretary Mnuchin. And then, after stating that Trump is spending a lonely, bitter Christmas alone at the White House, CNN reports a surprise visit to the troops in Iraq as an illegal campaign rally that exposed thousands of uniformed service members to punishment for violating the DOD policy on political activity, that he misled the troops about a pay raise, that he was the Grinch who stole Christmas. You get the picture. Just wow. Jeff Zucker's network is pulling out all the stops to make the White House Trump-free again. Can't you see just how much damage you are doing to your own brand by throwing away journalistic integrity in favor of a media vendetta against President Trump? Can't you see that Trump supporters are far less likely to examine what Trump is doing wrong and rethink their support if you keep on attacking their guy for the perceived reason that he called you fake news? Can't you see that reporting demonstrably biased and sometimes patently false information about Trump simply makes you look more like fake news? It's been two years. How are your ratings doing, CNN? How many times are you going to allow your reporters and your reports to be the news instead of having them report the news? All that I've learned from your stories is Orange Man Bad for so long that I only check what you report to look for potential content, not actual news. And as for your report that all of the combat soldiers who aren't allowed to wear civilian clothes while on deployment, by the way, may face disciplinary action, as a retired combat veteran and career soldier, I can confidently state that this wasn't an issue when President Barack Obama signed autographs and took pictures with the troops nor when President George W. Bush did it, nor when President Bill Clinton did it, nor President George H. W. Bush, nor President Ronald Reagan. As a matter of fact, as far as my research has discovered, only Presidents Carter, Ford, and Kennedy have failed to visit the troops deployed to either combat zones or hostile fire zones since President Truman, and even FDR managed to visit the troops overseas during World War II despite being confined to a wheelchair. Not to mention the fact that all of them, even Kennedy, Ford, and Carter, have actually visited the troops. It's a presidential tradition. Your hand-waving is noted, as is your willingness to throw the men and women in uniform under the bus in favor of your personal bias. Now that's just my opinion. Comment below to share yours. If you like this video, please check out my playlists. Check out these channels I have subscribed for more great content. New episodes are coming, so subscribe and ring the bell.